looking over our radicals. Um, so with radicals, we have different indexes that tell us the root. Um, so we have this chart if a to the power of n equals b, with a and b being real numbers, meaning we're not dealing with imaginary numbers, n is positive, then n is the nth root of b, or a is the nth root of b. So whatever number is in that index spot is the root that you are taking. Okay, so we have this whole chart. This whole chart is pretty much saying you can take the odd root of a negative number. You can take the odd root of a negative number, but if you take the even root of a positive number, it will result in two solutions. Um, so you cannot take, let's see, you can take the odd root of a negative number without getting an i, and if you take the even root of a positive number, it will result in two solu solutions. So if you square root both sides, we include the plus or minus. So if we fourth root both sides, we include the plus or minus. Any even root to both sides, you need the plus or minus. So we got three examples for real square roots and real cube roots. I'm going to show you how to go through these. Different color. So what are the real square roots of 0 0.01, negative 1, and 36 over 121? So we're looking at the square root of 0 0.01. Without a calculator, we're going to do this. Um, I don't totally know how to do it with a decimal, so we're going to change this to a fraction. So this will be the square root of 1, and this is in the tenths hundredths place. To square root a fraction, you square root the top and square root the bottom. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 100 is 10. So that would be our first answer. Second one, what are the real square roots of negative 1? We know this to be i, which is the imaginary number, which means that there are no real roots. So if the directions specifically say the real roots, you don't have to deal with i. But if, technically, if they don't clarify no real roots or real roots, you can include i. And the last problem, the square root of 36 over 121 well, in this first problem, we dealt with square rooting a fraction, so we'll square root the top and square root the bottom. The square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of 121 is 11. And now technically, now that I'm thinking about this, we just had this whole conversation about taking even roots. We need the plus or minus symbol, so this should technically be plus or minus 6 over 11, and this should technically be plus or minus 1 tenth. So even roots get the plus or minus symbol. Okay, what are the real cube roots of 0 0.008? So we would write this as the cube root of 0 0.008. I'm going to solve this the same way we did above, but now we're talking about a cube root, so I changed this into a fraction. So that would be like the cube root of 8 over the cube root of 1,000 because this is 8 one thousandths. It's in the thousandths place. Run out of space, so we'll go next to it. I know the cube root of 8 to be 2 and the cube root of 1,000 to be 10. I'll reduce that fraction to be 1 fifth. I do not need that plus or minus symbol because this is an odd root. Next problem. The cube root of a negative 1,000. You only get imaginary numbers from even roots of negatives. So you only get imaginary numbers from even roots of negative numbers. This is an odd root. So this is just going to be equal to a negative 10. And our last problem, we have the real cube root of 1 over 27. That would be the cube root of 1 over the cube root of 27, which is equal to 1 third. Okay, so we have some different problems here that we're going to go through and solve. Okay, starting with our first one, number 19. Sorry, the numbering's a little off. 
Um, to get rid of the squared, I'm going to square root both sides. So that cancels. We're left with x equals the square root of 100. That's an even root, so I need the plus or minus symbol. And the square root of 100 is 10. Number 20, I want to get x squared by itself, so I'm going to start by dividing both sides by 5. 125 divided by 5 is 25. Then we can square root both sides to get rid of the squared. We're left with the x is equal to plus or minus, because that was an even root to both sides. And the square root of 25 is 5. Next, we want to divide both sides by 9. So the 9's cancel. We're left with x squared equals. This does not reduce. Don't jump to your calculator, though. These are both perfect squares, so I'm going to leave it as a fraction. And then we will square root both sides. To square root a fraction, you square root the top, square root the bottom. It's an even root, so we have the plus or minus symbol. The square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 9 is 3. So our answer is plus or minus 4 thirds. Next problem. We want to subtract 18 from both sides. We are left with 4x squared equals 1. Divide both sides by 4. We're left with x squared equals 1 fourth. Uh, space, I'm going to go over here. So we have x squared equals 1 fourth. To get rid of the squared, I'm going to square root both sides, which that was an even root, so I need the plus or minus symbol. To square root a fraction, we square root the top. So the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. Number 23, divide both sides by 4. We have x squared equals a negative 1 fourth. To get rid of the squared, I square root the, both sides. I am currently square rooting a negative, so this is imaginary. Which the directions clearly state find the real roots. So we would say the answer is no real roots. So anytime you are square rooting or even rooting a negative, it's an imaginary number. And the last problem, we have x to the power of 3 equals negative 64. Sorry, the last problem on this page. We want to cube root both sides to get rid of that x cubed, so we're left with x. I do not include the plus or minus because this is an odd root. You only use plus or minus with even roots. Um, this is not an imaginary number because it is, again, the cube root. You only get imaginary numbers from even roots. So the cube root of a negative 64 is a negative 4 because negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, that would be a negative times a negative is a positive, times a negative gets me a negative. So that's why we don't get imaginary numbers with these. Okay, this is the last few problems. Oh. Last few problems of the section, maybe? Nope, not quite. Okay, so number 25. Oh, we've already done these. Okay, so we've done... 22, 23, and 24. Now I'm on 25. There we go. We want to fifth root both sides. So the fifth root of 243 is equal to 3. For that, I did use my calculator. And then x to the fourth, let's see. So we're going to fourth root both sides, which that's an even root. So I would need the plus or minus symbol. However, this would be an imaginary number. It would actually be plus or minus 2i. But the directions clearly say real roots. So our answer for this is no real roots. So you're still responsible to be aware of what the imaginary number looks like and how to simplify with it. 
but if you read the, the directions carefully, you can get out of it sometimes. Okay, these are the last few problems for this little section. Okay, number 27, we have the cube root of x cubed, y to the 12th. So for this, you're just going to divide. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. So this will be x to the power of 1. And I know that 12 divided by 3 is 4. So that would be y to the power of 4. You do not need to write a power to the positive 1. So you could also get rid of that 1. And your answer would still be xy to the power of 4. Okay, so for number 28, we divide. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And 15 divided by 5 is 3. So this would be x to the power of 2, y to the power of 3. So whatever the index is, is what you're dividing by when you're talking exponents. Okay, number 29. 12 divided by 6 is 2, so we'll have x squared. Let me give myself some more space. 6 divided by 6 is 1, so we'll have y to the power of 1. You don't need to write the positive 1 power. And then we'll have 18 divided by 6, which is 3. So z to the power of 3. And number 30. Um, if we don't see an index, we assume it's a square root. So you may not see a number there every time. If there's not one, it's a square root. So 24 divided by 2 is equal to 12. So we'll have x to the power of 12. 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. That will be y to the power of 4. And 16 divided by 2 is equal to 8. So z to the power of 8. Hopefully in your head right now you're thinking, well, what happens if it doesn't divide? We will get to that in the next video. For right now, I'm just I need you guys to understand that if it can divide, it should. We will get to the circumstances where if it doesn't divide evenly, what do we do? Because there is something for that. I'm just not going to go over it with these problems on this video. That'll be the next video.